Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and uh, back to our TypeScript 3s. So, so far in the TypeScript, we have seen uh, some basic stuff like what do you mean by uh, type assertions, different various types of data types, what do you mean by type annotations, arrays concept, enum, tuple, switch cases, if else conditions, so far we have seen. Today, we are going to talk about the loops and uh, it's pretty simple, exactly same concept the way we were using in JavaScript. Same thing in the TypeScript also. We are going to use that. So we are going to talk about, uh, right. And in for loop also, we have uh, different categories. So three type of for loop, a normal typical for loop, the index based for loop that we use. Second that we are going to use it with the, the for off loop. That is also we are going to use it. And the third one we are going to use for in loop. Okay. And then we will talk about the while loop. So that how to create the while loop and then all those things. And uh, then after that, we will see one more that is a do while loop also. We will, let's see how to write it. So if you are very new to loop, if you have no idea what you mean by loop, loop is a mechanism in programming where we can avoid the repetitive task. For example, if I ask you that if I really want to print 1 to 10, right? So what is the worst way of writing the code? The worst way of writing the code is that, let's say I'm writing console.log print one, then console.log, sorry. Then I'm writing that console.log print number two. So do you really want to write console.log, let's see up to 10 here. So 10 different statements that you have to write or same line that you have to write with number of uh, values will be different like one, two, three, up to 10. So this is the worst way of writing the code. We should not write the code. I can see a pattern here that one, then two, then three, up to 10 here. So what exactly we can do here instead of writing the code, or let's see, you really want to <clears throat> fetch some data from the file or something, or really want to uh, read some data from the dropdown. So I, I know that, okay, in that particular dropdown, there are 10 values are there or hundred values are there. I really want to fetch those values one by one. So what we can do, it means that's a repetitive task for me. First means, means like first get the first value, then second value, then third value, then fourth value. It means up to hundred values, let's see, you have to pick that in that case, we can use a loop here, right? So how to write a simple for loop, right? So let's see for a single for loop, what exactly we are going to do that. I'm going to write a for here like this. And here you create a variable. So for example, let's say I'm creating a variable let i is equal to, uh, let's see one, we have to print one to 10. And then I'm writing i is less than equal to 10. Why? Because we have to include 10 also, and then increase the value of i by one. So I'm writing i plus plus here like this. And now I'm printing the value of i here. So in that case, see, I'm not writing 10 lines of uh, statements here or 10 lines of code here. It's just only three lines of code or two lines of code. You see that i is equal to one. First, it will go and check i equal to one and then immediately go and check the condition. One is less than equal to 10. Yes. The moment the condition is satisfied, immediately it will come inside the for loop. It will not go to increase the value of i. It will just simple print the value of i here. So it will print one here. Then it will go and then increase the value of i by one. So i will become two now. Again, it will go and check two less than equal to 10. Yes, condition is again satisfied. So it will print two here like this. So remember one thing that once i equal to one, this is only first time activity. After that, it will check the condition, immediately print one, and then it will increase the value of i. So i will become two now. So now it will not come back here. It will just check the condition every time after increasing the value. So again, two less than 10. Yes, two will be printed. Then increase the value of i, then three, three less than equal to 10, then three. So it will just keep printing up to 10, 10 less than equal to 10. Yes. Condition is satisfied. It will print 10. Now again, what is the value of i? I will become 11 now, 11 less than equal to 10. No. So it will not print 11. It will come out of this particular for loop here simple so let's compile this code first and then let's see what will be the output for this so compile it and now i'm going to uh, simple run it loops.js and now you can say 1 to 10 is getting printed on the console here right 
And if you see the exactly same JavaScript code also will be created. You can say that uh, here it's taking the same thing. Here it's taking the variable I equal to this and that. It's getting printed here on the console. Okay, so you can use a simple for loop. Can we use a break statement inside the for loop? Yes, of course we can use it break. So now what will happen? It will just print I equal to one. Condition is satisfied. It will print I. Okay, while will be printed. And then break break is used to break the loop. It means terminate the loop and come out of this for loop here. So it will not print two, three and all those things. It will just print the first value of I and then immediately break. Right. So let's see the compile it once again and uh, run it now. And uh, we are going to run it loops dot JS. And now you can say it's printing only one here. Perfect. So for time being, I'm just commenting out this particular break here. So this is a typical simple for loop. We can use it here. Now, uh, what if I really want to, let's say print some odd numbers or even numbers. So that's up to you. So it depends how exactly you are just increasing the value of I here. So once again, let's say I'm creating another variable. Let's see J equal to zero. And my target is that I have to print, let's see, start from zero, then two, then four, then six, then eight, and then up to 10. Let's see even numbers that you have to print. So here I'm writing J is less than equal to 10. And then if the condition is satisfied, then you print the value of J. And then after that, increase the value of J by what? I'm saying J is equal to J plus two this time, because see this carefully right now, first time J equal to zero. Zero less than equal to 10. Yes, condition is satisfied. It will print zero. So what should be the next value I'm expecting? The next value that is what I was expecting, which is two now. So that's what I have to increase the value of zero by two. The next value I'm expecting four, then six. So every time I really want to keep adding plus two here. So that's why I'm increasing the value by two here, right? So let's see if I'm running this again. So make sure that, okay, I'm compiling the code save it and then compile the code and then run it again. So with the note that I have to run my JavaScript and now you can say that it's printing two to 10 here like this. Okay. So you can use it odd even numbers. Also, you can use it. If I really want to print the odd numbers then you have to start with the one right now we are printing all the even numbers here. Okay. Now let's talk about <clears throat> the second one that is the for off loop. How to use this particular for off loop for off loop. I can iterate the elements from the array. I can iterate elements from any list or tuple or any kind of collection that it's available. I can use it here. So let's create one array now. So let's say I'm creating one array. Let's see this array name is the some number array. Let's see numbers and uh, which is equal to some numbers I'm maintaining here. Let's see 10 comma 200 comma 3000 comma. 4,000 or 40,000, something like this. Let's see, these are the numbers that I have returned. And I'm just creating a simple for off loop now. So I'm going to create a variable here. So let's create a variable, any variable name. Let's see, variable name is R or let's see, variable name is N. Then I'm writing <clears throat> N of what? N of numbers that you have to use it here. And then you print simple N here. That's it. So what exactly we are asking that N, you go to this particular numbers array one by one and whatever the value is available, keep printing it on the console. So it will just go to N, go to N numbers, whatever N will go to the numbers. It will print 10, print 10 here, then 200, 3000, 40,000. It will keep printing it on the console like this. So let's clear it, compile it and let's run it again. So here you can say that it's getting printed. 10, 200, 3000 and 40,000 getting printed on the console here. All right. So like this also, you can write it if you really want to write any kind of condition. So if I'm writing that, okay, if N is equal to equal to uh, 200, then do what? Then I'm saying that just print, let's see, print high. And then after that, you simple break the loop. It means after 200, I don't want to print anything. Just simple high and then break the loop. I don't want to proceed further. So in that case, that kind of condition also you can write it. So once again, see this here, compile it and then run it again with the node. And here you can say that it's printing 10, 
then 200 and after that it's not printing 3000 and 40000 why because we are breaking the loop after this particular condition so break means not only breaking the if condition it will break the entire loop remember it will not break the if condition it will break the entire loop right so that's what now in the last session what exactly we discussed in the if else condition that break cannot be used within the if else condition if you are not using the for loop but today we are using the for loop that's why i can use break here as well so simple for of loop that also you can use it now let's talk about the for in loop and then we will see what is the difference between for in and for off so for in loop is also <clears throat> uh you can fetch the value from the collections from any array or tuple or any list that you have created you can fetch it so for in loop says that okay let's take the same array one more time let's change the variable name this time i'm taking let's see num is the array and then let's add some more values here let's see i'm writing something here like that okay one more value we have added so for in loop says that it will give you the index okay instead of the value so see this i'm writing for create a variable let and let's see here i'm creating a variable i and then i'm saying i in here and in where i you go to number variable or sorry number array one by one and if i'm printing the value of i see it will print the index of each and every value in the array so 10 is actually available and the zeroth position so it will print zero then one then two then three and then four it will print so it will not print the values directly it will print the index over here so i'll do one thing i'm just printing one horizontal line so that you will see the separate output after this line okay so let's quickly uh compile it and then i'm going to run it with the node and here you can say that see 0 1 2 3 4 it's printing ideally it should print 10 2 5 55 or something like this it's not printing why because we are using for in loop but if you see the output for the for off loop it was printing the exact values right so if i really want to print the numbers or whatever the actual values which are available in that case what i can do see i can just simple write that okay i is being used as an index so i can use simple number of i i can use it here like that okay this is number of i i can use it here okay let's clear the console once again and then uh, run it again compile it okay now i'm going to run it so you can say now it's getting printed 10 to 55 55 is coming here like that okay so for in loop by default this variable that you are using in your iteration it will give you the index if you really want to use it you have to use it with the array and with the square bracket you have to pass but inside the for of loop if i directly print for example let's not write this if condition let me just comment it out and then if i'm printing n n will start printing the values here like this right so can i say something can i append the i and then i'm saying plus concatenate and then equal to then i'm writing plus here it means along with the index give me the values also so how exactly it will print i means 0 equal to whatever the number is available 0 equal to 10 1 is equal to 200 and so on right so let's compile it again quickly and uh, run it so you can say we are getting the output here like this perfect so this is the foreign loop we can use it here like that okay now for example let's see if i really want to iterate a particular string so for example let's see i have one variable and the variable is let's see info variable which is having some value let's see hello type or let's see hello world okay let's see this is the thing a string value that we are having it i really want to iterate this particular string so it means like h then e then l l o like this if i really want to do that i can use for off loop also or for in loop also i can use it so for example let's see i'm writing a simple for here i'm creating a variable variable name let's see once again i'm writing let's see c variable c and i want that c is going where c of info array right 
and then if I'm printing the value of C directly, it will start printing H E L L O separately. Each and every character, it will start printing it on the consoles. I'll do one thing. I'll just print it after this line. Okay. So now let's uh, save it, compile it again, and then we will run it. So run it with the node. And now you can say that, can you see hello world is getting printed on the console. So you can print all the characters one by one here like this. You can do it here. Okay. So this is about the simple for loop, three for loops we have seen. Now let's talk about the while loop also. So let's write while loop here. Let's see same target that I really want to do that. I really want to print one to 10 here. What is the syntax of while loop? See this. The while loop that I'm going to use it, let's create a variable. Let's see variable is uh, let p is equal to one here. So first I have to initialize the value. Then I'm writing a while as a condition here. While with the condition that p is less than equal to 10. It means p should be up to 10, including 10. That's why we have to write equal to also because my target is to print to one to 10. Then I'm writing console.log and then print the value of P and that's it. Okay. So what will be the output of this? If you see this carefully, it's printing P equal to one. Okay. I mean, P equal to one, it's initializing and P less than equal to 10. Yes. So it will print one, but again, it will go and check the condition that one less than equal to 10. Yes. Condition is again satisfied. So it will print one again. It will go and check P less than equal to 10. Yes. One. So it will keep printing one, one, one up to infinite times. See, I'm running it. Okay. So let's quickly uh, compile it first. And then you run it. So see, it is keep printing one, one, one. Can you see here one? I have to terminate it. So press control C for the terminate. So what is the problem with this code? The problem with this code is that we have to increase the value of P by one also. So now we have to write P plus plus here like this or P equal to P plus one also. We can write it here. So now what will happen? P less than equal to 10. Yes. Condition is satisfied. Print one on the console. And then you increase the value of P by one. So P will become two here, two less than equal to 10. Yes. Two. Then again, increase the value of P by one. So P will become three, three less than equal to 10. Yes. Three, then four, five. So up to 10. So again, 10 less than equal to 10. Yes. Condition is satisfied. Print 10 on the console. And next value of P will become 11 now. 11 less than equal to 10. No, 11 is not less than equal to 10. Then in that case, what will happen? Condition is not satisfied. So it will not come inside the while loop and the program is over. While loop is over. Okay. So let's see this. What is the output of this? Compile it and uh, run it again. So here also you can see with the while loop also, we are getting one to 10 here, right? So. In the while loop, what we have to do first, you have to initialize then condition and then whatever the logic that you have to write here. So the question here is that what is the difference actually for loop and the while loop? See the use cases, use cases for the while loop that when to use while you have to use while loop when number of iterations are not fixed, right? For example, Number of iterations are not fixed. I have no idea that, okay, how many times I have to iterate my loop. For example, let's see infinite scrolling. Infinite scrolling means let's say you go to any page. Let's say you go to Zomato or you go to Swiggy or you go to LinkedIn page or your Facebook media page or social media page like Instagram or anywhere you keep scrolling down on Zomato. And the moment you see your favorite restaurant or favorite dish, then you have to stop the scrolling. Right. But you have no idea that how many times I have to scroll down the moment you go to the LinkedIn page and then you have to keep scrolling. The moment you see Naveen's post there, you have to stop it, the stop the scrolling. So how many times you have to scroll down? You have no idea. We cannot say that, okay, keep scrolling down for four times or five times and you will see Naveen's post or my post. Right. So where number of iterations are not fixed that in that case, we can go with the while loop. Second, for example, another use case, we can use it. Let's see. Uh, wait for page loading. Maybe application is taking around two seconds to load the page, five seconds to load the page, or maybe 10 seconds, or maybe 15 seconds to load the page. 
So I have no idea that, okay, how much time it is taking to load the page, maybe sometimes two seconds or five seconds. So I have to iterate the loop up to 15 seconds, 10 seconds or two seconds. So here it's not fixed, right? Number of iterations are not fixed. So in that case, I can go with the while loop. Same example, let's see, wait for the specific element also on the page. Any element, let's see some image or some pricing information or logo or any kind of link which is coming after a few seconds, let's see two seconds or maybe three seconds or maybe five seconds or 10 seconds. I have no idea that, okay, how much amount of time I have to wait or how many number of seconds that I have to wait or how many number of iterations that I have to perform to wait for that particular element. So in that case, whenever you see that number of iterations are not fixed, I have to go with that. Let's see, for example, calendar. Whenever you have to handle any calendar handling, calendar means, let's say I really want to select um, March 2024 date. So I have no idea that, okay, how many times I have to click on the next in my calendar, next button in the calendar so that we will reach in March 2024. So I just keep clicking on next, next, next. The moment I see March 2024 date or calendar or for that particular month, then I'll click on it. So calendar handling is another concept for the while loop. We can handle it. Another example, let's see web table pagination. Web table pagination means let's see there is a table and number of paginations are there, right? Pagination like this, go to first page, second page, third page, fourth page, like this, and it's written like next page right like this and then before that it is written that okay let's see the previous page so this is called web table pagination but my element is available on let's see on the fourth page but i have no idea that okay it's available on the fourth page or not it could be available on the a fifth page also a sixth page also so i'll just keep checking i'll click on first element my record is there no then i'll go to second then i go to third four and then on fifth page let's see element is available do you have any idea that, okay, how many times you have to click on these paginations? No, right? The moment it's available, I'll break my loop. So in that case, I'll go with the while loop where I have no idea that how many iterations I have to perform to check the record or check the use or user detail available on a specific page. Okay. So these are the use cases for the while loop. Now let's, let's talk about, talk about the use cases for the for loop. Use cases for for loop. It means when number of iterations are fixed, that time we have to use the for loop. Remember this thing. It means, let's see, in a particular, let's see, one drop down is there, or drop box is there. In that particular drop down, let's see, this is a month drop down. And we know that, okay, 1 to 12, it means January to uh, December values are there. So I know that, okay, I have to iterate my loop between 1 to 12 only. It means number of iterations are fixed. 1 to 31, it means maximum number of days in a particular month could be 31. So I know that 1 to 31 times I have to iterate this particular loop, maximum 31 times. So I'm already having the idea that how many iterations I have to perform here. So when number of iterations are fixed, let's see in case of array or array list, and then values are already available. So for example, this example that we covered, right? Number of iteration means I know that, okay, I have to perform 1 to 4 times. I really want to print 1 to 10. So I know that, okay, 1 to 10 times. In that case, I'll go with the for loop here. It means number of iterations are fixed. Now let's quickly talk about the do while loop. The last one. Do while loop and while loop both are almost same. But see the while loop here. While loop says that I won't allow you to come inside the while loop until this condition is not satisfied. If the condition is satisfied, then only I will allow you to come inside the while loop. Then only your business logic will be executed. Do while loop says, okay, fine, same thing, but at least you give me before checking the condition, at least you give me one chance to execute the business logic, right? So this is a do while. Loop. So let's see, for example, I'm creating a variable, let D is equal to one here. And then I'm writing, see the do while loop, how will you write it? In do while loop, you have to write do. And then this is the business logic that you have to write. And then after that, you have to write with the while with the condition here. So let's see, for example, I really want to print D less than equal to 10. And here in the while, we don't have any body, simple semicolon. <laughs> and here you have to write the business logic here. So here I'm writing that, okay, uh, first you print D and then D plus plus like this. So see, before checking the condition, this guy will be 
executing at least once. So for example, D equal to one, one will be printed on the console. What is the next value of D? D will become two here. Two less than equal to 10. Yes, condition is again satisfied. Come inside a do and then print two. Then D will become what? Three here. Three less than equal to 10. Condition is again satisfied and then print three here like this and up to 10 here. So what is the output of this program? Let's quickly check that. So I'll just do one thing. I'll just write after this line and let's print it. So compile it and run it. So here also you can say it's printing 1 to 10 after the horizontal line. Can you see 1 to 10 here? Right. But for example, let's see if I'm saying that the condition is like this. Okay. So now what will be the output of this program? See, the condition is greater than or equal to 10 and I'm writing D equal to 1. It will print 1 on the console. It means before checking the condition and we know that, okay, this condition will not be satisfied. 1 is not greater than or equal to 10. So it will be false. So I know that, okay, definitely the condition will be false. But before the condition itself, before coming to line number 70 or coming with the while loop itself, I'm checking the I'm just printing this statement here that I'm executing my business logic at least once. So I'm giving the opportunity or giving the chance to this code to execute at least one before checking the condition. So that's why what is the output? D equal to one, one will be printed. D will become what? D will become two now. And two is greater than or equal to 10. No. So condition is false. It will not go to the do loop, <coughs> do part and then done. So that's what if you run this program once again, compile it and run it. So it's, it's printing only one. But same thing if you see the while loop, while loop says, okay, fine, p equal to one. And then I'm not giving any chance to execute the business logic or this print statement. You have to go through with the condition in the beginning itself. Okay, so we are not giving any chance here without check without condition is not satisfied you cannot execute that but here before checking the condition condition will be false but before that we are giving a chance to this code to be executed here so that is the difference between while loop and the do while loop the statement will be executing at least once if the condition is not satisfied right so same use cases when number of iterations are not fixed but you really want to execute Let's you land on a specific page and you see that, okay, element is available or not before moving to the loop. We check that, okay, if the condition is already available, why to come inside the loop? You could just simple check that, okay, yeah, element is visible and then interact with that element and break the loop here. So in such use cases, we can go with the do while loop also here. So I hope this is clear. Different types of loops. Same thing we were using in JavaScript, similar kind of code in the exactly same code in the TypeScript also. Remember the difference between for off and for in typical index based loop, file loop and the do while loop are very basic fundamentals of any programming language. These three different types of loop everyone should know and aware of it. That's all for this particular video. Thank you so much guys.